This is the 34th and final part of Link's Awakening. We made it. We finally, we finally made, made, it, made it here. Uh, in this part, obviously, we're going to be fighting the, the final boss and also watching the ending scene. So if uh, you're trying to avoid spoilers yeah. or anything, we recommend you don't watch Just it. watch the first part of this video, yes. <laughs> exactly. And we also wanted to include the uh, the credits at the end to kind of give Nintendo a little credit to all the people who worked so hard on this yeah. game. But uh, we had a little bit of issues with our recording software and some yeah. flashes. Well, yeah, when it flashes, it just it just it's not good for recording software sometimes. No, so no, we had so to cut we had to cut those out. So we apologize to Nintendo. We wanted to give you guys credit, but we're giving it to you now. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we're finally here, ready to fight uh, the final nightmares. Uh -huh. And I love this. It's a, like many final bosses. It's a multi-staged. Yes. And like you were saying, fight. like you were telling me uh, before we even started this video, Ray, it kind of reminds you of the uh, Twilight Princess Zamp fight. Yeah. How it kind of goes through all these uh, bosses that we fought. Um, not so much in this game, but yeah. in past games. And I like how they reuse that idea. Yeah. For, mm. the, for the Zamp fight, many many years later. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Princess. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Well, I also like it. A lot of these bosses are very reminiscent of uh, Link to the Past, like with Aganim and Mogor oh, yeah. and Ganon later on. Which is, of course, one of our favorite. If you've paid any attention to us, you know, Link to the Past is oh, one of our yes, favorite definitely, games, definitely. of course. Oh, yes, definitely, definitely. Now, go ahead, son. This guy right here, man, he took... Well, I don't even know if I want to say this comment, to be honest with you, so maybe I should let you go ahead, but this guy took me forever. I had no clue to use the magic powder on this guy. I mean, how would you even know, though, without, like, going through every weapon in your arsenal? Well, how do you, like, you don't even hardly ever use the magic powder in any Zelda game when it's been in it. Yeah. And so, like, it's just one of those things, you wouldn't think it'd be effective on a final boss. Yeah. At least with, like, uh, Shadow Aghanim here. We know how to beat Aghanim. We did it twice in Link to the Past, yeah, uh -huh, so we know uh -huh. what we're doing with, with him here. And obviously, it's so reminiscent. It's actually it's exactly like the Link to the Past fight. It really is. And I like how, like, obviously they've been referring to the bosses all along as, like, the nightmares in this game. Mm -hmm. I like how it feels like when you're fighting these bosses from Link's past. Yeah, uh -huh. it's like It's almost like it's Link's nightmares a little bit. Well, this game takes place after Link to the Past, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, he, like, he was sailing across the ocean. Yeah. And who knows where. <laughs> Termina or something. <laughs> Well, that's another game, another timeline, whatever. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah. So all these uh, enemies were obviously fresh on his mind. Uh -huh, exactly, exactly. So it's pretty cool. I just like that. I thought that was a nice touch to, to bring back. Plus, like you said, we just like playing the old Link to the Past. Yeah, here's another one, Moldorm, but you get in that Tower Hair, which is one of the most annoying bosses. Oh. Ever, slightly less annoying. <laughs> and we also fought him in the first dungeon, didn't we? Yes, at the end of Tail Cave in this one. At least he couldn't knock us off of any platforms in, and, in here. And he slows down too, as like as you go a while without yeah. hitting him, which. Would have been awesome in Tower of Hera. <laughs> but he's but. much, much easier than, than that Tower of Hera fight for oh, sure. Oh, God, yes he is. One thing that I kind of remember from that fight in Tail Cave, if he knocked you off, you fell to that lower level where there was like people hanging from the ceiling, skeletons. Oh, like, yeah! Oh. Which is like, really, I mean, that's saying a lot that for was, Nintendo to put something in there. It's very dark, so. But we're happy we didn't have to deal with that that time. Now, here's one thing I don't understand. This is obviously Ganon right here. Yeah. I kind of thought it would have been good they would have thrown this phase at the very end. I think so too. Cause like the very last phase you'll see here in a little while, like I don't really know who that dude is. Me neither. Well, I mean for that matter, who's this little critter? This one right here is called Lamola. Lamola, I don't know Which, what he is. I don't know what game he's been in, to be honest with you. Hey, at least I got to torch him with the fire or yeah. the magic. Right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. One shot, bam. And this last one's called uh, Deathl, I think. Yeah. E E T H L. How do you say that? Yeah. So. And he, those uh, uh, arms, I guess you'd call them, do a lot of damage, yeah. even with that tunic we yeah. have. So you'll see I put on the feathers so you can actually jump them and avoid getting hurt. I have bad memories of this phase because, first of all, they say if you shoot with 15 arrows, you oh. can kill them. I'm pretty sure I shot this dude with like 50 <laughs> arrows and did not kill him. And the other thing is I didn't use a rock feather. Did not even oh, think man. about it, so it was tough. And you saw how much damage you did to me, and that's with that defensive tunic we yeah. have, the blue tunic we have. But, uh, also, hey man, I didn't actually have the boomerang equipped in my item menu. Oh, like, oh, oh. For some reason, I got rid of it. Yeah. And so like, I never even thought about using a boomerang. As you can see, one shot, bam, he's done. Man, it's. I, I thought I hit him earlier than I did, but you know, whatever. We got yeah. him. That's the important thing. Yeah, he's done. He's he's dead. So yeah, but man, I just love the stairway right here. Like, just I mean, there's like a lot of color, especially for an old is. Nintendo game. Just that's a very cool area right here. Plus, it's weird seeing like the stars and the kind of I guess clouds, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, like you're still inside Neg here. I mean, yeah, that is true. <laughs> Who knows where we're at now? Yeah, good point. <laughs> we just climbed the stairway to heaven. So. It kind of goes back. I mean, this was before the game, but like the whole Rainbow Road, Mario Kart, like the whole oh, like yeah, you know, the various colors. Of Mario, yep, we kind of seen it related to the game the whole time, so definitely kind of just capitalizing on that thing. Yep, we talked to the owl for the final time here in the and game. Like he, he's a guardian of the windfish, he says, or, or his, something his like guardian, that. or his messenger, or yeah, or something like something. that. Yeah, he's obviously he's been talking to us the entire daggone game. Yeah, he has been. He has been. <laughs> but he finally uh, he thanks us for uh, defeating the nightmares. And uh, he says his work is done, and now the windfish himself is actually going to come. Uh, we're finally going to yeah, we're gonna wake him up, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, after you know spending the last however many hours long this game is, 
We are finally meeting the windfish for the first time. And what kind of these weird design <laughs> is he like? Whoever thought about the egg idea and putting the boss in the egg thought about the design for the windfish. Definitely. This is some, let's just be honest. This is some trippy stuff right here, man. <laughs> that is some trippy stuff. That is a hippie whale. Right? Like, there's a lot, like there's a lot of crazy animals on planet Earth, and yeah. none of them look uh, designed like that. No, definitely not. Definitely not. I will say though, I remember like seeing him and then playing Skyward Sword when you see Levias. Oh the first yeah, time. very similar. Very Just similar. I saw that in my, my very first thought when I saw Levias. It looks like the Windfish, and I got so excited because I love this game. Uh huh. So I was excited to see him. Uh, I guess kind of make it have be a reimagined I guess mm -hmm. as Levias a little later on, but you know kind of just like you know go back and just kind of talk about the game like we always do oh, kind of like man. at the very end like I know like you said this is like your favorite handheld isn't favorite it? handheld even above Link Between Worlds which is which an amazing is an awesome game well I have it second like I mean I've talked to some people that don't have it very high I didn't actually play this game until about a year ago but yeah. I just thought. You know, it's aged very well. And yeah. Like I said, I have it as my second favorite handheld still, and I've played yeah. all the handhelds. Dude, there's just the nostalgia value that comes with this for me. I mean, it was one. I mean, it was the second Zelda game I ever played. And yeah. I played it so much as a kid on road trips and stuff. Mm -hmm. And kind of going back to here and getting to see some of the characters and areas we've explored as we play the Song yeah. of Awakening. I kind of wish they would show more like the characters and like I the know. interaction you did. Maybe more of the island. Like it was Definitely. only like five or six parts that they, they showed. They didn't show many. So, yeah, so kind of wish they would show more of that but you know. What can you do? Beggars can't be choosers I guess. No. We got to see Marin one last time. Yes, that is true. That is true. It's always been one of my favorite. Uh, Wish they was showing Eagles Tower again, but you know, <laughs> hey, like we said, you can't get everything in well, life. Well, we, so. we collapsed the top story of it. <laughs> yeah, that is true. <laughs> That is true. But I mean, yeah, they could have shown animal, the animal village. They could have shown Eagles Tower, Turtle Rock, yeah, a few um, things like that. But still, I think it was a, a nice yeah. little recap. Yeah. Of, of you can see right here. You know, the whole thing has just been a dream. You know, we've just been dreaming. Been. This is all taking place in our head and kind of weird here. Like I was thinking about Inception, the movie. Oh like, yeah. Like where they dream, it seems like it was five hours, but it was really like five minutes. Yeah. We've gone through this whole game, but has this only been like Link asleep for, I don't know, five, ten minutes? Well, I hope so. I mean, you're sitting there hanging onto a log in the middle of the ocean. Just you're like a wrinkly <laughs> bee. Like, if he was there for like five hours, he'd be like all wrinkled and stuff. Pretty sure we would have pulled a, pulled a Leonardo DiCaprio and drowned already. Yeah. <laughs> now, here's my question, and we don't ever get this answer. Like, what happened to him, like, after this? Like, we don't know. I, I know. That's like why that's that's actually what I like. Like, does somebody come rescue him? Obviously, because. Yeah. Or well, could he uh, actually die because, like, you know, yeah. every Zelda game <laughs> is kind of like a different reincarnation True. of Link, so this could be the last we see of this Link. Maybe, maybe the King of Red Lions comes and sees <laughs> Yeah, that's okay. Good point, good point. But either way, we are uh, sadly finally finished with uh, Link's Awakening. Great game, great game.